this walk-in is kind of steep and slippery, so they really got to be careful. <laughs> She always cries at weddings. <laughs> All rise. All right, if anyone gathered here today know of any reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the beautiful day that you've given with us to celebrate here with Scott and Abigail. We pray that you'd bless every part of this ceremony, Lord, and that you would bless this union and give these two a uh, beautiful life together. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, I'm going to read the scripture from Hebrews chapter number 13. In verse number one, the Bible reads, let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. And them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have, which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And this is a beautiful passage about love in general. It talks a little bit about marriage, but it starts out at the beginning by saying, let brotherly love continue. And if you think about what it means to be married, it's a lifelong commitment to love one another until death do you part. And the Bible says, let brotherly love continue. Obviously, this is a continuing love that is meant to last for a lifetime. Now, what, what does the Bible mean here when it says love? Well, in other places where the subject of brotherly love is brought up specifically, it says preferring one another. And so part of the idea behind love in the word of God is putting someone else before yourself, thinking about the needs of someone else it's really about being unselfish. And if you look at the next few verses after this verse about letting brotherly love continue, it says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. And again, this has to do with showing hospitality unto visitors, thinking about other people. It says in verse number three, remember them that are in bonds 
as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Again, the idea here is putting yourself in someone else's shoes, thinking about things from their perspective, rejoicing with those that rejoice and weeping with those that weep. These are all characteristics of what it means to have brotherly love. The Bible says in verse four, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. And again, marriage is a commitment to love one another for the rest of your lives. And then this is followed up by the statement, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, which again is exactly what marriage is. It's a commitment that Scott will never leave Abigail. Abigail will never leave Scott, that they will love each other and be there for each other through thick and thin, not just for a short time, but for a lifetime. After this, the Bible says, so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Now, obviously life is gonna throw a lot of things at us that we can't even begin to predict right now. And those of us that are older have already been through a lot of things that we didn't expect to go through in our lives. And of course, those of you that are younger are gonna find out that life throws a lot of curveballs at you. Things don't always go the way that you plan or the way that you would want them to go. But the beautiful thing about the Christian life is that we know that the Lord is our keeper. The Lord is our helper. We know that the Lord is always looking out for us. And even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil because God is with us. Now, on a human level, marriage is kind of the same way in the sense that there's a security in knowing that when you go through hard times in life, when life hits you with unexpected problems or tragedies, you have someone there humanly to go through those things with. And so obviously we all have the Lord as our savior because we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and we know he's always gonna be there for us. But it's also nice to know that someone on this earth is gonna be there for you too. Your wife is gonna be there for you. Your husband's gonna be there for you so that you don't fear the things that are gonna happen, the things that man could do unto us in this life. And then it says in verse seven, remember them which have, which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And because we know that the Lord Jesus Christ never changes, the Lord Jesus Christ is our savior, our companion, our helper, our keeper. Because we know that we have the assurance that no matter what challenges come our way, no matter what difficulties come our way, we know how it's gonna end up, okay? It's gonna end up good. The Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. And so even if in the short term, there are problems, there are difficulties, obviously marriage has its ups and downs, just like life has its ups and downs. The one thing that we know for sure is how things are gonna end. They're gonna end well, Scott, they're gonna end well, Abigail, if you have your faith and trust in Christ, not only for your soul and salvation, but also just for the way that you live your life. And that's why the Bible says, you know, remember them which have the rule over you, who've spoken unto you the word of God. You know, you've, you've heard the word of God, Scott and Abigail in church over the years. You've heard all the sermons uh, telling you what the Lord expects of us in our lives. And so if you follow that preaching, if you follow that teaching, if you follow that doctrine that we find the word of God and that you read in the word of God on a daily basis, your end is gonna be peace. Your end is gonna be blessed. And through it all, when things do get rough, you've got the Lord and you've got each other. And don't let the love in your relationship fade, but let brotherly love continue. And always remember that Christ loved us, Christ gave himself for us, Christ has received us, and so we ought to love one another. So we ought to receive one another. That goes for all Christians, but how much more do we need to love our spouse? And Scott and Abigail, you know, you're entering into uh, a blessed relationship 
and uh, there's going to be all kinds of joy and wonderful things ahead for you too, I know. And I'm really happy to be here and celebrate with you because uh, not only am I Scott's pastor, but I'm also Scott's friend, and I've gotten to spend time with him over the years, and he's been a, a godly uh, church member. He's been consistent. He's been faithful, and I believe he's going to be faithful to lead this home. And so if you, Scott, and you, Abigail, have freely and deliberately chosen each other as partners for life, would you please join hands? Scott, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife? Will you love her and keep her in sickness as in health and poverty as in wealth and forsaking all others? Keep the only under her so long as you both shall live. Do you so promise? I do. Abigail, will you have this man to be your wedded husband? Will you love him, honor and keep him in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, keep the only unto him so long as you both shall live? Do you so promise? Yes, I do. <laughs> Scott, would you repeat after me the following words, please? I, Scott. I, Scott. Take thee, Abigail. Take thee, Abigail. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Abigail, would you repeat after me the following words, please? I, Abigail. I, Abigail. Take thee, Scott. Take thee, Scott. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health in sickness and in health to love cherish and obey to love cherish and obey until death do us part until death do us part may I have the rings please all right scott would you go ahead and put this ring on the ring finger of abigail's left hand and abigail go ahead and put this ring on scott's hand all right and now in the presence of our church family here, friends, in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ himself, by the power vested in me by the state of Arizona, I now pronounce you, man and wife, you may kiss the bride. All right. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. And may I be the very first to introduce to you, Mr. and Mrs. Scott Oates. That's it, you made it. 